Hey all, I'm new to Practical Sailor and while I've always enjoyed the magazine, they've been making content for years. If you have a subscription, you can go and deep dive into decades of stuff on their website, which I'm doing. So I thought it would be awesome to share this journey of getting to know Practical Sailor with you while I do it. I was perusing the Practical Sailor archive this morning and I found something that hit home for me. It's about electrical maintenance and for anyone who hauls out in the off season or just wants to make sure that their ship is ship shape. This stuff is quick, easy, but very important. It's this article that Frank wrote. It talks about inspecting a new to you boat to get to know the systems, but makes some points that are really valid to me because Lady K is on the hard right now and I'm just starting to think about that long list of things to do before each launch day. I think we all do that. I use Excel. First, go flip every circuit breaker. I have a, an AC electrical panel with breakers and honestly, I never flip them, ever. But when I did, because Frank told me to, I found that one of them was loose, much easier to flip than the other three. I took a picture of the side of the breaker so I can go and find a replacement. The last thing I want to do is be sailing somewhere and decide to pay for a marina for the night so I can run the air conditioning and then have it continuously trip that breaker. That would ruin a good weekend cruise. Frank also writes about how some owners use the breakers as on-off switches in their boats, which he says is bad. Continuously using the breakers as switches wears them out. It can cause them to arc. And it's not good for the electronics that are getting power from them. Now, I don't do that, but food for thought if you do. Frank also talks about how all the DC connections should be crimp-on style connectors, which mine are, but preferably the kind with heat shrink built into them, which not all of mine are. My boat has always been a freshwater boat, and the first time it experienced the salty ocean and the salty air, I noticed a lot of that green corrosion that started to come up on the wires fairly quickly. In the freshwater, this has almost never happened, but as soon as I got to saltwater, it just has a way of getting to everything. Slowly, I've been replacing any connection that starts to turn green with a heat shrink style connector. I don't want to tackle that whole system at once, so that way works for me. Sometimes, if the corrosion is really bad, it chases down the wire inside the sheath for several inches, so knowing this, whenever I do a new wire run now, I usually leave an extra six inches of wire at each end. That way it's never too short if I need to cut it back. Frank touches on twist-on wire nuts too, and I've never used these on a boat, but I do see them a lot. My logic, and I think the logic behind this rule is, we don't use them because any vibration will cause them to get loose over time. So as a rule for me, anything that moves should not have them, like cars and boats and even campers and RVs. I talk to the tiny house builders all the time too, and they try to avoid using those little guys. You're just asking for trouble later. While I have you, can you give this video a thumbs up? It helps us make more sense to the YouTube algorithm so more people can see our YouTube videos in YouTube land. Frank goes on in this article to talk about chargers and inverters. This is worth a read. But the next thing that caught me was the alternator belt comment that he made. I always grab my alternator belt and give it a hearty shake. But Frank goes further. Look for frays on the belt, obviously, or any dry rot or cracking. But also, Frank says, black dust. Alternator belts break down over time, I know that. But they start to leave a trail of black rubber dust somewhere around them as they break down. That makes total sense to me, and next time I'm on the boat, I'm going to be adding that to my list. And the last thing that sort of slapped me in the face a little bit. I feel like Frank might have been calling me out here. Your shore power cable can carry a lot of load sometimes, especially when you're running the AC like I like to in the summer. That little retaining ring that I sometimes do not thread down, it's there for a reason and not just so if someone kicks your shore power cord, it doesn't fall out. It's there to make sure that you get a secure connection. The metal prongs in the plug need to make extremely solid contact with each other. Any sort of gap or loose fitment can cause restriction. 
and that causes heat, which causes fire. We know this. So why do I always forget to thread down the retaining ring? Probably because I'm lazy. And that's dangerous. What's on your checklist for your pre-launch? What do you always do that you know other people forget? Or what do you always forget? Leave it in the comments and let's help each other have a safe and fun boating season.